Good afternoon. Today is August 14th, uh, Friday, our YouTube recording day. This is Jay Leesk, and I'm very excited to bring to you This Week in Teams with a special guest. Uh, hi, I'm Craig Jenke. I am Joe. Yeah, I'm Jay's co-host for This Week in Teams. Also excited for our special guest, guest uh, Stacey Deer Stroll. If I said that right, and I know the last time that I talked to you, I could not pronounce it correctly, and I have no idea why. So um, she is a MVP for Microsoft MVP, owner of God, Vocal I, Point Solutions. <laughs> vocal. I I I need words. Vocal points. Vocal point solution. She also I know this one. She does SharePoint Saturday or SPS Cincinnati. Unless you've changed the name on that. So I know yes. we've changed ours. So. We did to the Office 365 stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to let you finish out with introducing yourself because you're probably better at it than I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, you pretty much, I mean, you pretty much nailed it. Um, Office and Apps MVP. Um, I've got an amazing team I work with at Focal Point and, uh, you know, doing pretty much end to end SharePoint Office 365. So I really enjoy it. It's not really a job when you enjoy it as much as I do. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, well, we're very excited to have you. Um, you know, Craig and I have been talking about the uh, the coming changes or the recent changes with regard to Tasks app and Planner and Outlook tasks and how that all integrates now. Um, yeah. And uh, as we were talking about it in the last week or so, you submitted a session, a couple of sessions regarding Planner and Tasks to the M365 Chicago uh, virtual event, which small plug we're we're very excited about and very excited to, to have you submit um but uh so we thought you'd be a, a natural fit to to come on the on the show and talk a little bit about um about tasks and planner and and the cool things that people can actually do with it yeah um absolutely i i get really geeked out when i start playing with planner and uh, to do and uh and um, I even have a little a little trick. Or I have this little app that I use in Outlook that even makes it a lot easier, um, especially when it comes to tasks and stuff. Um, so I'm anywhere you want me to start. Uh, so, <laughs> I'll start it out really easy. So before Jay joined or when Jay was rejoining because Jay dropped and had a technical difficulty, you were saying people often ask you questions or refer to things that you can't do in Planner that you think is commonplace and everybody should know. So if you'd like to elaborate on some of that stuff, that'd be awesome. Yeah, so um, even when I was at MVP Summit a couple of years ago and I went to one of the planner um, sessions and people go and a lot of people are going, we need to be able to create templates so we can make it easier. And I'm like, I've been creating templates <laughs> since planner existed. And they're like, how are you doing it? And um, so I just kind of talked them through it. And there were other things within Planner um, about how you can use Planner and connect them to your groups. And people just, they didn't realize that you could bring all these things together. Um, and so, you know, just kind of like creating a template. So I, in Planner, I literally have a, a plan that is called PMO templates. So I create tasks and I line everything up and it sits there. And then when I have a new project, all I have to do is go to the PMO templates after I've created that other plan and just do copy to that plan. Sweet. And so I don't have to retype everything. Yeah. So it makes putting the plan together really, really quick. Um, the other thing that I've done is I actually have a one called a project template, like a migration project template oh, um, by the types of projects. Then you can actually copy that project template to another plan. So you don't have to do any of it. Nice. Right? So yeah. it, it, it makes it super easy, um, you know, because some people are like, especially if it's a big project, sitting there typing all that stuff into a plan can be very yeah. cumbersome, right? But when you use templates, it's very quick and easy, and um, you're literally setting your projects up very consistently every single time. And that's just, you know, like the biggest thing about it. And um, and we literally use it all the time. So we actually use group sites for our clients. Right. So we uh, typically have multiple projects for clients because we've had a lot of project uh, clients for a lot of years, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we literally will create the plan inside the group. And so it's attached onto the left hand side. So you get different plans for the different projects. We also put, you know, um, you know, opportunities and we put support items all in plan so that we can track all of the clients information in one place. So you don't have multiple places you have to go. Um, here recently, Microsoft, um, you t 
before you always had to go to the group and then you could create the plan there to tie it to that group. Right. Well, they finally um, added it into the planner hub. When you're in that plan, you can then add it to oh, a nice. system group. So that made made that a lot easier because some people uh, really like to, to go to the planner hub, but right. I don't because you see everything and I, you know, as and so it's it's messy for me, right? Because I like to be if I'm focusing on a client, I just want to see what I have for a client. Um, so they've done a lot of great things. And I also love um, the new technology that if you go into a plan, you in the uh, the three dots in the settings, there's one that says copy to Outlook. Right. So I saw that. Yeah. So your due dates, start dates, due dates and all that kind of stuff. You can import that in, into your Outlook calendar and you can see that on your calendar. So oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty that's pretty nice because it's not like they I mean, a lot of times people don't go to planner or think about it unless they're getting a notification and all that kind of yeah. stuff. But if it's in your calendar, right, they're going to get right. reminded. It's going to follow with those defaults. Um, and then I took it one step further because, as you know, inside of the to do's, you can have your calendar, you know, anything from your calendar tasks. Um, you got planner, anything that I have assigned to me, you can break it up by your day. So I know exactly what I have to do every single day. I literally open up my to do's and I know what I got to do. Got my task list already. Um, and then uh, the fact that you can create your own. So like I even have my own personal house stuff, you know, different lists and all that kind of stuff. I have one place and I also have it on my phone. So I always have the same information. So don't forget grocery list or whatever type of stuff. Um, so I really love that. But the one thing that inside of to do's you can't like do a lot with planner you can put notes you can say i completed it right, right. um but you can't like add a task or different things in there you can put notes um so i did a little bit of research because one of the things because we use this stuff so heavily um i wanted to find a little bit easier way for the team to be you know see their tasks and for me to like if i get a support ticket in to actually create a task for it without right, having right. to go out to the group. So I found a tool called iPlanner. Oh, so iPlanner, it's a it's an Outlook add-in. And if you use iPlanner, just the regular one, so there's an iPlanner and iPlanner Pro. So iPlanner, you'd actually, if you click on the stuff in the iPlanner, you see all the tasks that are assigned to you. But when you click on them to update, it will actually take you to the gr group and plan and all that kind of stuff. But if you get the iPlanner Pro, you can do 100% of what you do in Planner right from Outlook. Wow. And, and then, Very cool. The thing, Very yeah. Cool. And then the cool thing is, is you also have the option, I can select an email. So if I get a support email, I can do that and hit create task, mm -hmm. fill in the information. I did it all from my Outlook and I didn't leave. Right. So we spend mo much more time we do in our email than anything else. Right. Yeah. So I always like to have that list where I have everything. But when I'm sitting there trying to clean up my tasks and get them done and iPlanner Pro has been amazing um, and it doesn't cost a lot. Um, organizations should really look into it. Um, you know, iPlanner is free. The pro it's it's yeah, minimal. Yeah. The more you get, it's the cheaper it is. But yeah. it makes life so much easier. So um, up until recently, the planner and tasks were really completely separated for, for the longest time, right? Yeah. Um, so it sounds like you've had ways of, in, of integrating them for a while. The iPlanner especially is, is something you've used to kind of pull those together. Yeah. Um, in your, you know, in your opinion, the, the recent tasks app update to Teams, um, do you think that changes the game at all? What are, your, what are your thoughts on how that will change the use of Teams and tasks? Well, I think it will become easier for the people that live in their teams, right? Okay, right. Um, I think that'll be very, very important because then they won't. My goal is I don't want my clients or anybody or even myself have to go to three or four different places to see everything they need, right? And, um, you know, certain people, especially if you're assigning external tasks for people that are coming in, they can, you know, they only have that one place to go. You don't have to give them access to something else so that they have to go there and do it. They can all filter it into teams. And if that's where they live every day, then it makes sense that it, that it be there. Um, and just knowing that it, you know, it updates on in all the locations, then makes it easier. And it's very, it keeps it very consistent. I was very excited when they finally made the connections because everything was so disjointed, like you had yeah, yeah. to update it in multiple places. Um, it just definitely is brings back the more return on investment by streamlining that stuff. Yeah, sweet. I get. I'll be honest with you. I, 
I, I would like to use it more, but the, the disjointedness has kept me away from using those kind of yeah. tools. Yeah. One of the things is the reason why I really wanted to start Planner when I did is because all the things that, you know, that it had already, but the things that are coming in the future, right? Um, you know, some things, of course, I can't talk about, but um, but knowing that you, <laughs> <laughs> we won't tell anybody. Yeah, <laughs> knowing, you know, just knowing that where it's eventually going to go and be more integrated, um, me, things that I want to see um, is my ability to add a field inside a planner. So if I can actually add a field and connect it to say um, your time entry, so then everybody only has to enter their information once, how many hours they spend on task and mark it done and it actually submits the time to. I can't wait until that type of ability is is there and I think we will get there. Cool. Yeah, it, it's funny, the, the way we've kind of hacked that with what we're doing for the most part is the labels. So you can add, you've got the six labels I think on the side and Mm -hmm. You can call them whatever you want. So I, I, every use of planner, we call them something different because that's our way of hacking the field. If you can do a Boolean value, you've got, you know, six true false or yes, no's that you can select from. <laughs> Absolutely. I also like the fact now that you can do, you can create plans and tasks and stuff utilizing flow. You can integrate flow into oh, something. Okay. Um, so, you know, you're, they're starting to make the connection with that. And there's some templates out there that you can do some different things in teams and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, every time more and more updates come out, you know, it's yeah. just more and more integrated and it makes just life easier. Um, the disjointedness, I know, shied a ton of people away uh, when it first came out. So it's a little bit of a struggle to say, hey, I, I want you to revisit this, you know. Right. So, so I'll demo it. That's one of the reasons, you know, like I said, one of the reasons I also put the, that presentation together because, hey, this now, it it really does work for you and it allows you to do it remotely too from your phone mm -hmm. you can hit you know you can still do it all and i think that's i think that's important because look at how many of us are all work you know well we've always worked from home but <laughs> how many people are now working from home and everything's a little bit different right and uh so it just makes life a little easier and, and easier for a team to work together and see who's got what and what's being done that type of thing Okay, cool. That leads me to this question. So you obviously love it. You're using it. You've got your team together. Now, with any Microsoft technology, SharePoint, Teams, et cetera, I'll always get asked about user adoption. How have you been so successful to to create user adoption among your own, your own team? And how do you get other clients to use that? Because I will be honest with you, Planner is something I only use if somebody makes me <laughs> enter right so it's just it's it's yeah. one of those things i thought i always think oh it'd be great to use and then i don't yeah so the biggest thing is seeing is believing right right um i can talk about it all day and get them all hyped up on words but man when you can actually show them what it can do and then how you can make a process that they currently have easier they're like oh wow i want that right so I, I will do a demo all day long. And that's why when I set it up and I, you know, showed the team and everything, they're like, well, that's a lot easier than the process we used to do. And I'm like, exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one, we're eating our own dog food, but we're integrating all of the functionality to make things easier. You know, we're just not, you know, like before we had a list where we kind of put things in and, and whatnot. Um, but having something like this and then you're getting automatic emails and the PMO don't even she doesn't even have to go ask. You know, cool. hey, what's your status? It's in the plan. So she can go update yep. the WSRs and she doesn't even have, you know, those types of things. It, just, it makes project management easier. It makes, you know, meeting deadlines. I noticed a huge difference in the team setting deadlines in the planner task because they get annoyed from the, hey, this is due. This is, you know, yeah. coming soon, right? Yeah. And um, they know how I am about missed deadlines. So it's right in their face, right? Um, so that stuff, it just makes it much easier for them to follow. You've got notes for history and all that kind of stuff. And I love the fact when you put a note in and you hit enter that it actually sends out an email. Right. And even more importantly, I don't have to go read the message or reply to the message from Planner. I can reply to it from my email. Yeah. Yeah, the, the integration with Office 365 and email, the ability to click, you know, when you finish, complete a task and things like that has been amazing. The other thing, just to add to your list, I think the other thing that's kind of hit my team a lot is if Planner is being used in addition to something somewhere else, there's a lot more pushback. Um, so 
being able to being able to to streamline as much as possible. You said integration make it easier. Absolutely agreed. Um, if it's possible to, to integrate it, especially with how easy uh, it's become to integrate things with Flow and um, uh, the the app updates themselves, it's uh, huge. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, so we had a rather large client um, uh, that they've been they still actually still have uh, SharePoint 2010, <laughs> um, but they're going to be a lot of that out there. <laughs> they're going to be moving to Office 365, and one of their biggest things was they were so segregated with everything. Um, they I remember it was like uh, 17 different tools to communicate, you know, between stores, distribution, internally, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like they literally had to do the same thing in all these different systems, right? And so they gave me this list, and they go, "Can you do this stuff in SharePoint?" So I built them a demo, showed them the planner stuff how they you nope. know you roll up communications and how it all works and they're like their entire processes are being rewritten because i was able to literally knock out 17 different tools that they pay a lot of money for support yeah. for, right. and and it and they already own it in sharepoint and you know so um when you can share and show those types of things it, it can really go far with a company but i never hesitate doing a demo because that's the only way you're really going to get good user adoption is to use examples of what they do every day in planner right. in to do's etc yeah now you've mentioned um project management a lot here and and so for i, I work in the government space and a big thing in the government space is Microsoft Project, it's used everywhere. Um, <laughs> and I'm sure I'm sure it's used uh, in a lot of places outside of the government too, but I'm curious, what has your experience been um, walking into a customer who's a big project uh, shop and talking to them about Planner? Well, um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about it. eventually they're gonna connect some of the project stuff in with, uh, with Planner. Right. Um, to, to feed that in, but you can pull some information now utilizing flow. But I actually had a client that um, they were getting ready to purchase project online, even, you know, the whole PWA thing, right? Mm -hmm. But they were, when in the conversation, they were only going to use a very small portion of it. So when I, you know, they told me what their actual requirements were, I said, well, can I show you something? So I opened up planner and yeah. and all those requirements i met in about a 15 minute you know demo Sweet. that i put together right so and they're like do we own that i'm like yep i said go here and she's <laughs> like she goes we do and i and so i actually got a thank you a thank you letter from their cto for saving them money nice. right um that's and, awesome. and, I, and that's you know that's very common though that people don't realize what they have the ability to do in office 365 and spend money on other tools Right. And then but then they only use a small portion of it. So it's, they're really not getting their money's worth and they're never going to get a return on investment on it. Yeah, yep. uh, that happens with a lot of the, the tools. Yeah. Uh, you know, like the dynamics that, you know, some companies, they, you know, they start using it and they're like, well, how much of it are you using uh, this piece? I'm like, you have the entire. Why are you paying for all of this? You yes. can do what you're doing. You can do in SharePoint just as easy and a lot easier manage and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. it depends. I mean, it's great for clients that really use all the functionality and totally worth it, but um, not every tool is worth it for every client. So. No, yeah. I agree. Sorry, yeah. Jake, you go. Go, Jake. I was going to say that's one of the things I love about the business apps is, I mean, yeah, there are plenty of reasons to use third party tools um, as, as an uh, ISV, like clearly I'm going to come up with reasons. But the, the great part about the business apps platform, uh, Power Apps, um, the announcements with Dataflex recently, the changes to Planner and ta ta uh, Tasks, like any, you can do a lot with the main license before you start looking at third-party stuff. My, the, the conversation I often have is don't assume you can do everything, but also don't assume you can't do what you need. Like right. there's, a, there's a balance, you have to go into it um, in the government space, I, I remind them constantly, like, there's a third party network of tools and solutions for a reason. Right. So first, figure out what your base requirements are, your minimum viable product, what do you need to be the be successful, and look at what's possible, and then decide, okay, with everything else, have we hit it? Do we have nice to have that we aren't getting? Um, that's when you start looking at your third party tools. 
Yeah, which is why, you know, which is why I looked into something for my outlook, because the fact, so right. I actually did, uh, I timed some things, right? So me going to, you know, opening, you know, our site and going to the client site, entering in something in support and, or um, updating a task versus going into Outlook using iPlanner Pro and doing it right there, right? So it took me literally something like five seconds to do it in Outlook, which took yeah. me about 10 minutes to do it because I had to go to the site here and then here to do a support and all that kind of stuff. That's a huge time savings. And so in iPlanner Pro, literally my first day with my hugest return on investment because it was so easy to get things updated and the team loves it because it's yeah. easy. It's easy. And uh, they're just updating things so much better. And so it makes things easier for me and the PM and all that kind of stuff. Um, it has to be easy, right? Every, you know, mm. if you if you if you make something very very complicated, you're never going to get the user adoption you want. So you always got to find great ways to make something easy for your team so they can be successful. Okay, so to to just build on that and kind of wrap up because we've been actually going for 15 minutes and we told you we'd only keep you for 15 to 20. What would be like your top three tips for the Planner platform? The plan. My top three tips totally would be creating the templates you know, so that you can get your projects done and or tasks, um, you know, I have used both of them. The other thing is um, they have built in analytics right. for the planner. So you can see how your project is doing visually. And, you know, having being, you know, having that and be able to filter, you know, utilize that information and bring it together and do a nice Power BI dashboard of all your projects. Those yes. are things that you can do and people don't realize it just doesn't have to be one planner. You can bring them all together and get that information together, uh, get that information and display it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, cause, so you, cause you still want to measure that stuff and you, but you want to make it easy as well. Um, but uh, those are the, I mean, those are the big ones. Um, you know, it's, if you want to be successful and really utilize planner, get those things done or realize those things and it makes it a lot easier. Okay, and then, so we'll move <laughs> off of that, and we should have gave you this opportunity up front, but just to end out, you want to tell us a little bit about fo uh, about Focal Point Solutions, what you guys are up to, what you do, pitch your company, and then if you want to pitch your event too, uh, the SharePoint Saturday in Cincinnati, it's a great event. I spoke at it one year um, with the Halloween theme. We're still doing that? Uh, it's it's virtual this year. Yeah. Yeah, so we won't. You Jay know, has a costume or two he could wear. Jay's a big Star Wars nut. <laughs> Well, I have my Yoda costume I work on. But I, we'll probably do, still incorporate some of our, you know, um, the Halloween stuff. But, of course, we won't have our everybody dress up, there, you know. But um, so uh, Focal Point Solutions is literally a Microsoft SharePoint and Office 365 consulting company. We essentially do end-to-end -end from, you know, they don't have it, they need it. We help them implement, plan, governance, user adoption, training, all of that type of stuff. Um, you know, we also work with some really good third party companies. Um, and so we make it very easy for our clients to literally, we give them one throat to choke. So they don't have to go deal with the third party companies. We handle it for them um, and then help them with the support and maintenance and all that kind of stuff. Um, something that we're doing that, a couple things that we're doing um, that are really cool is, well, we're reaching out to all the clients on the whole 2010 workflow thing, right? Oh, yeah, I've got a few of those. Yeah, uh, we have a lot of those. <laughs> We've got one client with 300. Oh, yeah. that's going to be a fun project. Yeah. I've got a client with thousands. Yeah, so, you know, just trying to find the best case scenarios for them. So that's, you know, something that's real hot right now. Um, the other thing is, is uh, we've actually been working with interns. Um, so I had started having some conversations, um, you know, with uh, a couple people. Um, Mike Matarani, you guys know who he is. His son is a freshman, in, or actually now going to be a sophomore. He is one of our interns. Oh, nice. So and he's in Ottawa, Canada, right? So yep. training them and also, and he has just went like gangbusters. And he, I mean, he definitely has a job out of college when, <laughs> when he's done that for sure. I'm not gonna let him go anywhere, uh, but. Nice. Um, he's amazing, right? Um, and then uh, we just brought on another one from NKU, which is Northern Kentucky, and he'll be a senior. He's in, so Omar's in um, like a computer technology programming um, type degree, and um, Dylan is a cybersecurity. Oh, and wow. so what we've, what I had realized is I couldn't ask him for a resume because 
what I learned was, is the colleges are not using the same terminology that we are. Oh, no. Okay. So for them to write a resume, they're using the terminology they've learned in their classes. But cybersecurity, they should have already heard Azure M365, yeah. right? And they're not. So I so I brought him in and I talked to him. So I really asked him questions and found out. I'm like, dude, you this would be that perfect fit for you. And so I've been training him up and he's I mean, he's running scripts and all this kind of stuff and doing security things. And um, it's just, you know, one of those that I'm glad we started doing it because eventually we're all going to be gone. Who's going to replace us? Right. <laughs> and, yeah. and I'm like, uh, you know, let's train them young, teach sure. them teach them consulting young um, and then they'll know how to deal with it and all that stuff. And I give my team flack sometimes because the interns always have their time in and they don't. <laughs> they haven't learned to be lazy yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But they're doing a great job. But I thought, I think it's something that's really important. So uh, you mentioned our um, event, our virtual event is actually on a Friday this year. Yeah, um, so we, we did do that too because we don't want to give up our Saturdays. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you if you guys if you haven't submitted yet, you better because it closes this week. Um, okay. But one of the things that I asked is my interns to put a um, an actual uh, session together to talk about how to get a job out of college and looking for and how to get involved. And so we're gonna we're gonna promote that you know to the colleges and stuff like yeah, that. That's cool. Yeah, so, you know, and it can be for other kids to come in and see how they're doing it, but also parents who have kids that need to get internships, what they can do and help guide them. Um, I think it'll be, they're both super excited about it. Um, and uh, I am too, because it's, you know, get like I said, getting them started young. And then if they can help others, like, you know, we took them in to help them, then I think that's just great. So. That's awesome. No, that's really exciting. And, and for... For those of you listening who aren't actually familiar with the community concept for around SharePoint and Office 365 and M365, it's it's amazing to see how this community has helped people build their careers. Um, uh, Any time that I've taken on, uh, you know, a young SharePoint developer or a PM who's first getting into SharePoint, the very first thing I say is, "All right, what uh, what user groups? SharePoint user group, M365 user group, Power App user group." What user group is in your area? Start going to those meetings. Yeah. Um, the sad thing is, too. I mean, it's uh, I. It's rare to find somebody under thirty at one of those, yeah. and they just don't. They're yeah. just missing a huge opportunity. Yeah. For, and, for development. Yeah, I mean, my the intern that's going to be a senior this year. He's been trying to get an internship, but the problem is his terminology that he's learning yeah. versus the buzzwords and stuff that we use. It's been very difficult, and and the college is the college doesn't understand that, you know, and okay. they, they have to really start um, bridging that information because we all know that this is a, a Microsoft world when it comes to technology. These people are going to touch Microsoft, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so why not actually use the terminology they're going to hear when they're when they're out? Um, yeah. And, you know, one of the other things that I've, I've been very, um, you know, that I've taught them is always learn from the foundation up. You yeah. have to know what, you know, things in the admin panel settings and all that kind of stuff and how it works there. Then you got your next level, the sites and stuff, then the development level on top. Always start at the bottom and build that foundation so that things actually connect for you. Otherwise, yeah, connecting sense. those dots are very hard. Yeah. Cool. No, good advice. Very Thanks. Well, well, Stacy, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I, I had a lot of fun not just talking about what we intended to talk about on Teams and Planner, but actually the the conversation about interns. I love talking about interns. That's how I got my start in the industry as well. Um, so seeing that, you know, continuing to grow, and I really look forward to seeing the, your interns' presentation on um, on getting a job out of college because I, I think I, I'm I'm excited to see what they come up with. That's really cool. Yeah, I, I could give you an inside, but I'll let them surprise you. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, no, I look forward to seeing it was something we may borrow for our event um, because it is a great idea and it's something that I have I've thought about for a while that in the whole track like I remember doing a sequel Saturday years ago where they had a track of tech writing um, for like doing blogs and, and things like that and doing the different forums and protect technical presenting and those were actually the biggest session draws of yeah. all of them. wanting to know how they get more they get themselves out there more because they, everybody at that conference, you know, understands the idea of community and 
how you need to put yourself out there to have a better to to line up more jobs and things like that. Yeah, probably. I I didn't think you know because I've been we've been working with them to get it together. Probably should have had them uh, submit. Um, I actually thought about it, um, but I think you guys is is closed now. But uh, no, I just opened. It's we're just, open for a couple weeks yet. Okay. Well, it's, or if definitely it's not, have it's, them submit. <laughs> I'll get them to submit. Right. Awesome. I'll get them to submit. Right? So absolutely. Awesome. Cool. Well, again, thank you, Stacey. Uh, I really appreciate you you joining us today, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you guys for good the invite. Thanks again. We appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.